Well, hello and welcome to the bathroom of the dollhouse for another reading from The Secret Language of Birthdays by Gary Goldschneider and Hugh Stelfers for August 12th, the day of convention. And here we have us a picture at the top of the page of what do we have here? If I can get it in frame here, some decorative door hinges. That's right. Let's see if you can see. They are most unconventional, I would argue. That's right. That's <laughs> for the day of convention well i didn't say whether it was a typical convention or not any of them hey is it august 12th and it's your birthday today well if it is i just want to extend you a heartfelt happy birthday and if you're finding this video you know long or shortly after your birthday has already come and gone i hope you had a happy birthday and for everyone else who's just joining us well welcome and i hope you enjoy yourself now before we dive in as i like to do around here as a late Let's roll some dice. That's right. Why are we rolling dice? Well, this is the die cast, a birthday cast. So we got to live up to the namesake. And we're also doing it, well, for synchronicity's sake. Ooh, and what did we roll us today? We got us a four and a one. Uh, four in the crown and a one in the root for your new age chakra folks. Four or five. That's right. A four and a one, four or five. Now, what is... A synchronicity, you may be wondering. Well, for everyone who's, whoever everyone who's not initiated with synchronicity, in a nutshell, it's just going out into the world, looking for those numbers, and letting the universe show us the path. That's right. Let us let us uh, see that the universe is looking out for us, and it's going to show us that it's there. And you just do that by looking for your four and your one or your five, right? Or whatever numbers you so choose. But I'm just putting the intention out there for you, for the four and the, and the one for the five. So maybe you're see a bus I, I often like to talk about the bus rolling up the number five or the 41 who's to say and you get on there because it's your number and then you get off on the number five stop or maybe you see somebody with a shopping bag that's got a big old five on it and you just well they're getting off on the next stop maybe follow them for a spell you know a little bit back so you're not being all stalkery and then when you see a four and a one or a five again well, hey, you go off in that direction. It's something fun to do if you got nothing else going on. And hey, you know, it gets you out of the house. Or maybe you see him in the house. I don't know where you're going to see him. I, I've been looking out for numbers in the house. It just doesn't happen. But sometimes it does. In any event, check out yesterday, the uh, August 11th. <laughs> I should have been able to do that math in my head right off the top. If you want to see something that happened in the house. Uh, in any event, hey, let's dive in with your birthday reader. All right, enough screwing around. All right, your month is August, your day is the 12th, and your sign is 18 to 20 degrees Leo of the Leo 3 period specifically, and your quality and element is fixed fire. That's right. Okay, August 12th, the day of convention. Those born on August 12th are keepers of tradition, all right, and intent on asserting themselves in a particular field of expertise. Theirs is the task of preserving old wisdom, laws, and techniques essential to the mastery of their craft. Highly successful people born on this day recognize few equals, but remain hungry for any new information hitherto unknown to them and will spare no trouble or expense in acquiring such knowledge. And that knowledge to them is power, is clearly evidenced in their attitude and lifestyle. August 12th people are also aware of the power inherent in timeless rules and laws. Yet, only the less evolved types born on this day stubbornly insist on following tradition blindly. More highly evolved August 12th people build on tradition and cultivate in order to blaze new trails, innovate, make technical improvements, and generally advance themselves and those close to them. And for them, tradition is a living entity. And it lives in them and in their work. But although they embody conventions, they must not be assumed to be conservative or reactionary. Those born on this day know that understanding history, ritual, family, background, and cultural tradition frees one to make choices, to keep what is desirable, and to discard what is not. Ignorance dooms one to repeat mistakes. 
The lives of August 12 people are often lived at a frenetic pace. Undeniably drawn to precarious situations, their energy can easily get out of balance, and thus they run the risk of health breakdowns and of wearing others out, particularly mates, family, and friends. Their colleagues may begin to resent their assumed infallibility. Indeed, August 12 people are capable of arousing jealousy and animosity of all sorts, and even may come to be regarded as snobs or tyrants. With a deeper understanding of their own power and tempering of their dominant and sometimes intolerant attitudes, those born on this day can even be more successful in their work. In diminishing tyrannical, tyrannical rather, tendencies in their personality, August 12th people engender a healthier, healthier respect and reduce resentments in others. And for many born on this day, becoming less aloof and dropping a hierarchy of values concerning people will be a major step in their evolution toward higher spiritual values and true humanity. Evaluative terms in particular must be carefully examined by them and periodically refined in a new light or scrapped altogether. Well, all right, today was a rather shorter entry. Uh, by a large margin, but I get to that a little bit later. I just thought I would mention it so you understand. Um, here, I'll just show you so we can get it out of the way, all right? Take a look, see, they left a whole a whole portion of the book kind of kind of empty there down here at the bottom. Normally, it's down to the top there. So they shortchanged you a bit, but we'll get to it, like I said. All right, hey, let's dive in to some notes. All right, uh, keepers of tradition and assert themselves in their field, tasked with preserving old wisdom essential to the preservation of their craft. Uh, reckon, uh, geez, recognizing few equals and hungry for new information and sparing no expense for that knowledge. All right, that's a little breakdown of what they said at the very beginning. But the difference between the highly evolved and the lesser evolved is those who take those traditions further. All right, they do the introspective work on how to evolve the traditions. All right, that's your dynamic versus your static. All right, that's a common theme this past week, I will say. So you're in good company. At least I would argue, anyway. So, reading just the first few paragraphs of this entry, I had to ask myself if such people actually existed. It was that uncanny to me. Uh, and maybe it's just that this book was written in the 90s, and so much of this has, uh, has happened since then. And uh, in the era of work fast and break things, it seemed impossible to imagine such an idealistic realization of somebody. And it's crazy that that's just, I mean, that was just, man, you know, 15, 20 years ago. It's gone by like that and things have changed so much. But I realized, yes, these people are out there. And maybe you are one of them, all right? And maybe it's just the idea of tradition seems so outdated that it flies under the radar. But be the dark horse, I say, okay? The unexpected entity. And maybe that's the point. You don't want to draw attention either, right? Maybe that's just it. You're not going to advertise all this stuff because it works for you, and that's great, right? Um, so you don't want to draw attention. You hold the keys to a secret, a secret you aren't about to give up. And that's fine. Consider what you, that's fine considering what you give to the world. Just be sure to make room for existing with us other mere mortals, all right? The top of the ivory tower can get lonely. And what else did I write here? And uh, our necks are starting to hurt from always looking up. That's right. That's what I wrote. All right. Hey, let's move on to your numbers and your planets. All right. Those born on the 12th of the month are ruled by the number three as one plus two equals three. And by the planet Jupiter, those ruled by the number three often seek to rise to the highest position within their sphere. And August 12th people are no exception. Those ruled by the number three also love their independence, a quality enhanced by the fiery Leos. Uh, Jupiter lends an optimistic and expansive social outlook, enhanced for August 12 people by the sun's influence as Leo's ruler. 
and therefore increases the self-confidence and positive orientation of those born on this day. All right, hey, what did I have to say about your numbers and your planets? I deviated a little bit on this one. I got into a mode, so let's see what I said here. The expansive planet Jupiter, a planet this close to being its own star, but it wasn't having it ostensibly, all right? Who wants to be responsible for sustaining an entire galaxy, or maybe it's just a solar system, only to collapse into an electron degenerate white dwarf when you can be your own entity so influential that your gravitational field affects that of the star you orbit? Hmm, all right. Not that you needed a metaphor to increase your self-confidence. Yeah, that's what I did for your numbers and your planets. They, they did a pretty good job putting some stuff in there. So I wanted to give you a metaphor, all right? Hey, keep up that self-confidence. Not that you need me here to help you with it. All right, let's dive in with your tarot. All right, the more eclectic of the metaphysical practices as I see it, but it's fun, it's free, it's in the book. Let's dive in, all right? The twelfth card of the Major Arcana is the Hanged Man, who dangles by his foot in a head-down position. Though such a position seems helpless, the Hanged Man is nevertheless spiritually powerful and deeply thoughtful. The positive attributes of this card are recognizing limitations and overcoming them, as well as simply being human. The negative aspects are spiritual myopia and restrictedness. All right. Hey, what I have to say about your tarot. The Hanged Man. A bit of a copy-paste job as far as this is concerned. You know, this is basically what they would put any time they mention the Hanged Man. But hey, they gave you a little bit of personification there in the beforehand. So uh, with the numbers and planets. So that's kind of what they do. They pick one. Uh, but I also do everything previous. <laughs> Let's see. A bit of a copy-paste job here. But if everything previous holds true... The positive aspects of realizing limitations and overcoming them is important to mention, in addition to the simply being human aspect. As the breakdown itself, by my mind anyway, made you seem more than human. And while we both know that isn't true, in your heart of hearts, right? There was ample room left on the page to explore that further. That's why I was mentioning that earlier. Your breakdown being the shortest by a line, at least all the way back till July 26. So that's right. Make sure you examine being human. All right. Just something to think about because you are that powerful. All right. So let's dive in with your health. All right. August 12th people must beware of psychological conflicts with family members, particularly with their children. If those born in this day play the role of strict authoritarian, they can certainly expect their children to rebel against them, or even worse, see their children submit to being crushed in spirit. If they demand obedience from their mate, they will only succeed in obtaining it for a finite period of time even if for years, but in the end, they will feel the heat of repressed, frustrated aggression breaking out against them. Consequently, it is essential to their good health and that of those around them if they learn the lessons of acceptance, understanding, and above all, how to relax, all right? Having fun is the best medicine for August 12th people, coupled with a varied diet. All sorts of family and social gatherings can afford such opportunities. Well, okay, what I have to say about your health. Mind how you treat others, apparently, all right? As uh, hard can be the heart that wears the authoritarian, or <laughs> how'd I get that wrong? Uh, Heavy can be the hat, or hard can be the heart that wears the authoritarian hat. That's what it is. Hard can be the heart that wears the authoritarian hat. I was trying to do a little alliteration, and I duplicated a word in there. All right, remember to build on tradition, all right? I think you know that. But don't get mired in it, all right? Lest you push people away, even if uh, you've never met them. <laughs> you've never met them. 
very your uh, I, I can't read my writing even if you never met him i guess that's what it says i don't think it does though so hitting event let's move on to your advice drop the ball on that one i'm sorry folks but heavy is the hard <laughs> i already forgot what it was all right let's move on to your advice enough screwing around come down occasionally from your ivory tower oh i think we mentioned that and mix a bit with your fellow human beings. Learn to share and to accept. And most importantly, to relax, laugh, and have fun. Be aware of your strength, of your disapproval. Ooh, all right, what I had to say about your advice. I found this a little bit interesting. There's something I hadn't heard before. Be aware of the strength of your disapproval. All right, that's deep in my opinion. I'm sure a lot of us don't even think about as much. All right, maybe uh, be of the mind that we don't have that. Uh, many of us, I think we're not of the mind that we have that kind of influence, at least us more down to earth folks. <laughs> maybe I'm speaking for myself and maybe we don't. Maybe that's why we don't think about it. Uh, but for someone who knows they do, I'm assuming that's you, perhaps that's something to meditate on. How the rest of us don't understand that. Uh, kind of an obverse dynamic there, I mean. So maybe there's something there for you to think about and get something from, all right? Hopefully I was clear enough in that. I need to spend more time focusing on the notes, I'm guessing. Any event, hey, let's dive in to your meditation. Perhaps there are no accidents. Once again, perhaps there are no accidents. All right, I'll leave that up to you to figure out and take with you. It is your meditation. All right, hey, let's move on to your strengths and your weaknesses. Are you ready? All right, your strengths, you're knowledgeable, you're faithful, and you're serious. And your weaknesses, are you ready? You know you got some, right? You are human after all. You're tyrannical, tyrannical rather, and superior. Ooh, tyrannical and superior. I don't know, some folks might not think that's well, such a weakness, but hey. Yeah, that's up for the subjective viewer. It's the people who that feel that tyrannical side that are going to think it's a weakness, right? Okay, hey, let's move on to those born on this day so we can see what uh, company you share, right? Or what people share their company with you, rather. Um, and I know this probably doesn't apply to you. Well, maybe it does. There's a lot of people I talk to, uh, even in my age group, below or above, who just don't know what to do with their lives and they submit to a job they hate or something they get zero passion from. So let's see what some of the people born on your birthday did for themselves and what made them famous and special for those born on this day. Let's get into it, all right? We have Madame Helena Blavatsky, who's a Russian theophist writer of The Secret Doctrine, and she was the co-founder of the Theosophical Society. We also have Cecil B. DeMille, the Hollywood director of The Ten Commandments, uh, in the 1923 and the 1956 versions, apparently, and was a producer. We also have Edith Hamilton, a classicist writer of The Greek Way, we also have Ross McWerther, who was a co-writer and co-creator of the Guinness Book of World Records and shot by the IRA. He was also a twin of Norris. And so can you guess who's next? That's right, Norris McWerther. He was the co-writer and co-creator of the Guinness Book of World Records. So the two of them got together, all right? We have Pat Metheny, who was a jazz fusion guitar, is rather, might be still around, uh, jazz fusion guitarist, guitarist rather, and a composer, and one of my personal favorites, all right, Mark Knopfler, all right, the British lead guitar singer-songwriter, if you guessed it or you knew it, Dire Straits, all right. Uh, we have Diamond Jim Brady, who was a New York financier, gourmet. Uh, we have uh, Samuel Fuller, film director of The Big Red One, who was also a producer, writer, World War II hero, Bronze Star, Silver Star, and Purple Heart. So you could be a war fighter, I'm guessing, all right. We have William Goldman, a uh, writer, Hollywood screenwriter, um, of Marathon Man. We also have Mary Roberts Reinhardt, a thriller writer of The Circular Staircase. We also have George Bellows, New York artist, sports painter. We have Mello, uh, one name there, uh, impeached Brazilian president and resigned. Uh, we have John Poindexter, a U.S. Navy admiral and a national security advisor and an Iran-Contra figure. 
We have Tsarevich Alexis, uh, was heir to the Russian throne, son of Nicholas, and executed by the Bolsheviks. Uh, I probably said that wrong. We got George the (laughs) Fourth. Roman numerals, right? Uh, British king. We have George Hamilton, the film actor. We also have John George Gamillan, who was a German 18th century naturalist and a Siberian traveler. We also have uh, Mohammed Hadi, or Hada rather, uh, Indonesian statesman. Robert Southey, who was a British romantic poet and associate of the Wordsworth and Coleridge. Recognized a couple of those names, but not all of them. But hey, you know, maybe you could be a king. Watch out for those Bolsheviks, all right? That's right. Hey, once again, this has been the Secret Language of Birthdays for August 12th, the day of conviction. Your season is summer. Your sign, once again, is Leo of the Leo three period specifically, and your quality and elements is fixed fire i have a affiliate link down in the description for this book you're going to be able to read it a lot quicker than i did for you in your own eyes there maybe you get something that you enjoy out of it so give it give it get your own copy shop through there support the channel whatever you want to do but more importantly happy birthday that's right i hope you have a happy birthday and for everyone else who just joined us out of curiosity i hope you enjoyed yourself seeing me flub everything oh yeah i messed up some of them names so we got to do some butchering right and other than that one last thing your daily numbers that's right don't forget them it's a four and a one four or five get out there and find some synchronicity let the let the universe show you it's there with you all along all right folks take care of yourselves And happy birthday.